Hello, my name is George Sullivan, and I'd like to welcome you to the Gannett Arts and Crafts Wood Shop. This is a safety video that is required for anybody that wants to use the wood shop. It allows you to get the DA3031 card, which you can use. After you get that, you can use the wood shop anytime you like. Uh, I'm going to cover each one of the machines and the basic safety. And if you have any questions when you're using the machine, don't hesitate to ask the instructor. This is a 10-inch uh, tilting arbor table saw. 10-inch means that the blade is 10 inches wide. It'll cut through about 2 and 3 quarter inches of wood. Uh, each machine has a safety allowance, which means how close you can get to the blade without using a push stick. Uh, the push sticks, we have two types. This long one and this one is more or less uh, puts more pressure all over the board, complete surface. And for the rest of the parts, uh, we have the guard, which has to be on the blade uh, all the time and the flaps have to be down when you're using it. You can raise them to make your measurements, but then lower them to do your work. There's only two circumstances that you can take the guard off, and one of those is uh, if you're cutting a dado cut or a uh, cut, you're resawing a board, just cutting part of the way through the wood. This is a dado blade, as is this one is a dado blade. They're just two different styles. This is a stackable dado blade. It has two blades, one on each side, and some chippers that go in the middle. You add the chippers until you get the correct width of the dado. This is an adjustable dado blade. It's sometimes called a wobble blade. And all you do is turn the center and it offsets the blade to cut how wide a dado you want. And as I said a few minutes ago, uh, this is one of the occasions that you can take the blade off or the, the guard. And the reason for that is you're not cutting all the way through the wood. So if you were to use this guard, it would interfere with the wood. When you're using the table saw, uh, there's two different cuts that you can make on here, either rip or cross cut. Ripping is done with the grain, cross cut across the grain. If you're doing a rip cut, you always use the fence. Also make sure you have at least one straight edge on your board. If not, you could bind the blade down and it could kick back. Uh, make your measurement, lock it down, push your board against the fence, the straight edge, and just push it through. Once your hands get closer than four inches of the blade, uh, pick up a push stick and push it the rest of the way through. Uh, Cross cutting, you always use a miter gauge which fits in one of two grooves on each side of the blade. And you just hold your board up against the miter gauge and push it through the saw. We also have a couple throat plates that cover the blade while you're using it. This one with the narrow groove is for a regular blade. This one with the wide groove is for your dado blade. And it just fits in a slot around the blade.
and before you make any cuts make sure you lower the blade till it's approximately a quarter inch above your wood. About like that. That's so that if some reason you do get cut only a quarter of the inch of the blade is going to do the cutting. So it might save your finger some time. Okay, for the rest of the parts, uh, we have uh, the switch that you're turning on is here. The <clears throat> on switch is protected so you don't uh, push it by accident. The wheel right here raises and lowers your blade. We also have a wheel on the right side that tilts the blade up to a 45 degree angle, 45 to 90 degrees. Now I want to demonstrate couple cuts on here. First of all we'll start with a, a rip cut. And we'll set it about two inches. And when you get closer than an inch, or say a half inch to an inch, you cannot lower the one side. If you push it over and lower it, it's going to offset the splitter on the back of the guard. So just leave it up and that will give you room to push your push stick through there. Okay. Remember I said that once you get four inches of the blade, you use the push stick. And that's basically that for the rip. Uh, cross cut is done with a miter gauge. Uh, you mark your wood how wide you want. Make sure you keep a, a sufficient pressure against the miter gauge with your wood. And just uh, there's a little window up here on top that you can look in and see when you're right next to your line. Turn it on. And push it through. I've been uh, doing this type of work for about 45 years and 90% of your accidents on the table saw is someone reaching near the blade to remove a piece of scrap wood. Do it with a push stick or just a piece of scrap wood. Don't chance losing a finger just to remove a piece of scrap of wood. This is the anti-kickback device and it's used uh, when you're ripping or cross cutting it. It prevents a board, if it does get in a bind, it prevents the board from kicking back. The uh, saw has a five horsepower motor and you're not going to hold the board back by hand. It's a lot more powerful than a human. So that anti-kickback device prevents it from kicking the board back and hitting the uh, operator. This is a another 10 inch tilting arbor saw. Uh, it's just like the other one except for one uh, major thing and that's the electronic device which stops the blade when it detects skin it will stop the blade in five milliseconds which means in five millionths of a second it will stop the blade and drop it below the table and in doing so it runs about a hundred dollar device that, that stops it but it saves your fingers everything else is basically the same uh, you got your on off switch this paddle and this is called a saw stop uh, this crank raises and lowers the blade, and this crank tilts the blade. Also, it has a fence. Uh, 
miter gauge and your throat plates and also adjust the blade so it's about a quarter inch above the wood. Even though this machine is supposed to stop the blade if it touches your finger or any other skin, uh, I would not bet the farm on it. So I always use a push stick. It's kind of like a loaded gun or rather an unloaded gun. Treat it like it's loaded because I'm not going to bet my finger that that device is going to work. The next machine is called a shaper and if you've ever used a router it's similar to a router except on a lot larger scale. Uh, you can uh, do decorative edges like on the edge of this door. Uh, you can do raised panel doors. Uh, this is called a raised panel door. The raised panel is in the middle. Uh, you can make panel doors which is the same as a raised panel door except the panels flat. It's not raised. Uh, this also has a an edge, cabinet edge on the door. You can also do that on here. Uh, you can stack several uh, blades one at a time and make some pretty good molding. Uh, but it's similar to an upside down router. And for the parts, this is your fence. There's two of them. Is a in feed fence and an out feed fence. Both of them are adjustable by loosening this knob and turning this wheel in or out. This is your guard. And you adjust it so that your board just barely moves through with a little bit of friction. The reason for this is it covers the blade. That blade if it ever gets into your hand, there probably won't be anything left, but this will protect the, your fingers, especially when you're doing a raised panel, because they're sometimes three and four inches in diameter. This crank on this side uh, raises and lowers your bit. This is your switch. And we also have a reverse down here. That allows you to go in either direction. Only thing is make sure your blade is cutting in the direction that you intend for your board to go. We also have a vacuum system that is hooked up to most of the machines. Uh, it needs to be on for this one because it'll throw sawdust back in your face. If not, all you have to do is loosen this nut here and tighten it down. If you need the vacuum on, all you do is uh, inform the instructor and he can turn it on in the office. The safety allowance for the shaper is four inches. Uh, make sure you use a push stick if you get closer than four inches of the blade. Also, never put your hand directly in front of the blade in case you do have a kickback. Your natural response will be to push in. And as long as you're on either side of the blade, that won't hurt you. So never put your hand directly in front of the blade. This is a 20 inch bandsaw and the measurement 20 inches comes from the distance between the blade and the throat of the machine. A bandsaw is used for cutting curves in a board. It's not designed for cutting straight cuts. The narrow the blade, which this is a quarter inch, uh, the sharper cuts you can make. The parts, uh, the switch is over here on the throat. The, this crank back here raises and lowers the guide post and it should be approximately a quarter inch above the wood. 
This is the table. All you do is loosen two nuts down on the bottom here and you can tilt the table. Also has a groove for a uh, miter gauge if you're cross cutting. Uh, these two cranks that are left should not be adjusted by the customers. Uh, the bottom crank is for tightening up the blade. The top crank is used for the tracking, which means your blade should ride right on the middle of a rubber tire within these guards. And if you just if you adjust this crank, you could uh, cause the blade to come off the wheel. The bandsaw has a uh, safety allowance of two inches. Anytime your fingers or thumbs come within two inches of the blade, you use a push stick. Uh, another safety rule is never put your thumb or finger in front of the blade when you're pushing a board. If you happen to hit a hard spot, it'll make you push a little harder. When you get through the hard spot, it could go pretty quick, and before you know it, it's cut into your thumb. So always be to either side at least two inches of, of the blade. We also have a pedal right here, and that is a stop, which will stop the blade in a matter of seconds. We also have a 14 inch bandsaw. All the parts are the same. We also have a 20 inch bandsaw over there by the uh, duct. And the fourth one is called a, a resaw bandsaw. It's 24 inch. Uh, some people bring in a three inch thick board. They want to cut it down to the three one inch boards. They can set this up and it has a wider blade. Remember that I said the narrow blades cut a sharp curve, the wider blades cut a straighter line. This is a little more dangerous because of most of the size of the blade and the amount of the blade that is exposed because you're usually cutting through six to eight inch wide board. So make sure you use a push stick and a fence. Uh, if you're going to resaw a board, make sure you have one, or a, a log, make sure you have one flat surface so that it'll ride against the table. If it's completely round, you could be going through there, the saw will, will grab the wood and make it turn and bend the blade. And these blades run about 40 bucks a piece. Okay, this is a 12 inch joiner and it's used for joining edges of boards. You can either join a 90 degree uh, for your finished edge or if you're going to glue several boards together it needs to be 90 degrees and you won't, if you do a good job on this you won't have any cracks in your two boards. Uh, also it'll cut an angle up to 45 degrees. The safety allowance on this machine is four inches. Uh, don't uh, get any closer than four inches of the cutters without you use a push stick. And just like the shaper, uh, you don't want your hands to get directly above the blade. If it was to grab the wood, throw it back, uh, there would be nothing between you and the blade. For the parts, uh, this is your fence. It's adjustable. Uh, you loosen these two nuts here, two knobs, uh, pull the fence over until you get it located where you want it, then lock these back down. There's a crank on top that you can loosen this knob and tilt the fence from zero to 45 degrees. 
And if you want a nice square edge, make sure you check this with a, a tri-square to make sure it's 90 degrees. This is your guard and it's spring loaded so that once you pass through it covers the blade. This is your switch. Uh, this is your in feed table. This is your out feed table. It has a crank back here that adjusts your in feed table. That's the only table you need to be concerned with adjusting. It goes from zero to three quarters of an inch. Very rarely would you cut off three quarters of an inch. It would uh, probably tear your wood up. Uh, it has an automatic stop on the blade. Once you turn it off, it, uh, it uses a brake to stop it within a couple seconds. And that is controlled with this knob here, the switch. One accent is, is caused quite a bit on a joiner is placing your thumb across the end to push it through. Your board will get narrower and narrower and it could clip the end of your thumb off. So always keep your hands on top of the board or using a push stick. Uh, if the board sticks above the fence, just use your two hands. You don't need a push stick because that's more than four inches. Once you get close to the blade, work around, grab the end of the blade, and then just work your way over. That way your hand's not on top of the blade. Same way if you're using a push stick, pushing the board through the same way, letting it slide through your fingers, and then work your way around and push it on through. Another trick of the trade is if you're pushing the board through there, and you hear a lot of popping and cracking. That means either you're going too fast or the grain's going the wrong direction. So if you'll check the grain on the side of the board, this one is coming out on the front of the board. So you want to turn that around. And if you still hear popping and cracking, you just have to slow down. Okay, turn it on. While I'm cutting the board, I'm trying to keep even pressure against the fence and against the table. This is an 18 inch planer, or some people call it a surfacer. And it takes rough lumber and planes it down smooth. The parts, uh, this crank raises and lowers your table. This raises and lowers your table a lot quicker. It's automatic. This one's manual. This is your on and off switch. This crank raises and lowers the rollers beneath the table. Uh, some rough lumber is, uh, has a lot of friction to it, so it's hard to push through. Basically, when you raise this crank here with the rollers, you're kind of like adding grease to the table. It helps it go through. When you're planing a board, make sure it's at least uh, about a foot long. And it has a gauge here on the right. Make sure you're down say a quarter inch uh, wider than the board, thicker. So you turn it on. Then you lower the table. You place your board in there. And raise the table until it grabs the board.
it uh, it cuts the top of the board till it's smooth. And then you flip it over until you get down to the finished thickness that you want. Uh, after you get that first cut with this crank, you just crank this uh, clockwise about a half a turn, then run through there again. We have two uh, planers. This one, like I said, is an 18 inch. We have a a gold one right there, which is a 24 inch. Also, make sure this is open when you use it. That's the vacuum again. Uh, loosen this wing nut here, open the gate, and make sure the vacuum is going. It removes all that, those chips and uh, sawdust. When you're through, make sure you close the gate. Okay, this is a 14-inch uh, railer arm saw, and basically it's used for rough cutting lumber to length. So you wanted to buy a board out of the lumber room. It's uh, three feet long. All you need is six inches. You bring it out here and cut off six inches. Uh, you can't do any real accurate work on this machine. It has a six inch safety allowance. The parts, you have the on off switch here. This is your guard. The crank on top raises and lowers your blade. Make sure you loosen the cranks on the back. They're clamps. They, they hold the blade in place. Uh, make sure your hands are at least six inches from the blade. Push your board against the fences, these two fences here. Uh, turn the blade on and gradually pull the blade across the wood. It will actually try to pull itself across, so sometimes you have to keep it from doing that. One thing you don't want to do is rip a board like that. It could, it's very unstable. It could uh, kick that board back and take your hand with it. So if you want to do that, use the table saw. Only thing you do on here is cross cut. We have two uh, belt sanders. We have a Grizzly and a Powermatic. Both of them basically do the same thing. This one's a little wider, and it's an oscillating bell sander. If it's a finished edge, you'd, you would want to sand it down smooth, so that's what this straight flat surface is used for. Basically, the, about the only thing you can do to yourself is catch your finger between the sandpaper or slip your hand off a piece of wood and hit the sandpaper. It's a fairly safe machine. This is a, a 37 inch surface sander. It, uh, it's capable of carrying two belts. For instance, you can, the first belt might be a 80 or 100 grit. The second belt may be 120, 150. So the wood is finished uh, smooth when it comes out. Uh, we do charge for this. That uh, more or less pays for the, the sandpaper belts. They run about 50 bucks a piece. Uh, the instructor is the only one that can use it. So if you have some boards to sand, uh, tell him and he'll help you. It's, uh, it's a very delicate machine. And if everybody was to use it, it would probably tear up in a short amount of time. This is the office. And in the office, we have hand tools, electric hand tools that you can check out, belt sanders, drills, biscuit joiners, uh, skill saws. Uh, we have nailers, squares, hammers, uh, levels, different things like that. The craft shop also 
supplies a uh, another service, and that is uh, kiln drying lumber. You can go to a sawmill, uh, buy green lumber, which is wet, uh, pay maybe 50, 75 cents a board foot for it. Uh, we'll dry it for you. Uh, we charge uh, 15 cents a board foot for a full load, which will hold 800 feet. Uh, you probably get uh, end up with a board that costs about a dollar a board foot. Uh, normally you go down to uh, a lumber mill or, and pay two, three, four dollars a foot for it. So you save a lot of money if you want to go to a sawmill and bring in your own green lumber.